Hello. In this video, we are going to construct two orbital correlation diagrams, also known as Walsh diagrams. The first involves a molecule of the form HXH, where X is a second row element. In particular, we are using water as our example. Here is the computed optimized structure of water. From the bottom, we show sketches of the four highest energy occupied molecular orbitals of bent water, along with the lowest energy virtual orbital. Here from the bottom, we show sketches of the four highest energy occupied molecular orbitals of linear water, along with the lowest energy virtual orbital. The two EU orbitals shown side by side are degenerate, which means that they have exactly the same energy. Here is a graph of the energies of the previously noted orbitals of water as a function of the bond angle. We know that the experimental bond angle of water is 104.5 degrees. We have used computer simulations to optimize the geometry of the molecule while keeping the HOH bond angle fixed to some particular value. We then calculate the energy of each orbital to see how it changes based upon the bond angle. The 2A1 orbital is an, an all bonding molecular orbital of the 1S orbitals on hydrogen with the 2s orbital on oxygen. As the molecule goes from bent at 90 degrees to linear at 180 degrees, the energy of this orbital does not change very much. Note that data points were collected for all molecules every 10 degrees. Here we notice that the energies of two orbitals, 3A1 and 1B2, cross over each other at a bond angle of about 100 degrees. The energy of 1B2 drops as the molecule becomes more linear, going to the right on the graph, and 3A1 increases. Note, too, that the symmetry label for 3A1 changes to 1EU when the molecule becomes linear. Three A one and one B one have different energies when the molecule is bent, but their energies converge to the same value when the molecule becomes linear. We say that the orbitals are degenerate. It is possible for two orbitals to have the same energy by accident, but often it is a direct consequence of geometry. In these sketches, we imagine that the x-axis is going left to right, the y-axis is going up and down, and the z-axis is coming out of the screen. On the upper molecular orbital on the right, the red circle within a blue circle is meant to depict a 2PZ orbital on oxygen sticking out of the screen along the Z axis. The 
the virtual orbital for A1 is completely antibody. Different colors here represent different phases, and its energy barely changes going from bent to linear. Our second and final Walsh diagram concerns molecules of the form YXY, where X and Y represent elements of the second row, possibly different. Now we have the possibility of pi bonding. Our specific example is carbon dioxide, CO2, with its geometry optimized structure shown. The numbers representing the bond lengths in Angstrom. Here are sketches of the six highest energy occupied orbitals of bent CO2 and its lowest energy virtual orbital. The alphanumeric expressions in black are the symmetry labels of the orbitals. Here are sketches of the six highest energy occupied orbitals of linear CO2 and its lowest energy virtual orbital. Note the two pairs of degenerate orbitals 1EU and 2EG. The G is short for garata, which means that the orbital is symmetric with respect to inversion. The U is short for ungarata, anti-symmetric with respect to inversion. This is the Walsh diagram for CO2, with data points taken every 10 degrees. Several of the orbitals happen to be so close in energy that their lines on the graph are difficult to distinguish, for which I apologize. The first orbital of interest is 4A1, with sigma bonding between the 2S on the central carbon atom and P orbitals on the oxygens. Except when the molecule is substantially bent, the orbital energy does not vary very much. Three B two features sigma bonding between a two p orbital on the central carbon and p orbitals on the oxygen. Five A one and one B one begin with similar though not identical energies in the bent CO2. Following our scheme, 5A1 involves 2PY orbitals on all three atoms, whereas 1B1 involves 2PZs. They converge to the degenerate orbitals 1EU. When CO2 is linear, the Y and Z directions are indistinguishable. We can get from one to the other simply by rotating 90 degrees. This is the geometric reason for the degeneracy. Four B two and one A two are largely non bonding since they have no contribution from the central carbon atom. Four B two begins higher in energy but the two converge to the same degenerate representation 
2EG. Again, the 2PY orbitals on the 4B2 orbital become indistinguishable from the 2PZ orbitals on 1A2 when the molecule becomes linear. Four B two starts out slightly higher in energy than six A one when the molecule is most bent, making four B two temporarily a virtual unoccupied orbital. However, it soon crosses energies with six A one, which then rapidly increases in energy as the molecule becomes more linear. So it is the six A one that is the virtual orbital for the actual linear CO two geometry. As we saw previously, 4B2 drops in energy to become part of the degenerate 2EG pair. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Please stay safe out there, and as always, have a good one.